Resort fees just went up in 2024. Two major strip casinos pay millions in fines over money laundering. Another iconic Vegas area casino is being demolished. The sheriff is pushing to change the law in Nevada. The Fontainebleau pissed off millions of people and the Super Bowl is right around the corner. So get ready because we've got all that and more coming up in this month's video of Las Vegas news updates and rumors for February, 2024. The latest tourist numbers show that from the beginning of 2023 through the end of November, an estimated 37.4 million people have visited Las Vegas, which is a 1% increase from last year. The average price for a room on the Strip that month was $270, a 35% increase, and the average room price in downtown that month was $109, an 11% increase. The Strip made $821 million in November 2023 in gambling revenue, a 23% increase, and downtown made $81 million, a 2% decrease. MGM Resorts has kicked off the new year by raising resort fees across all of its Las Vegas properties. The raises are anywhere from 2 to $6. MGM has stated that raising the price of resort fees will help them continue to remain competitive in the hospitality industry for future travelers. Resort fees are now $37 at Luxor and Excalibur, $42 at MGM Signature, Park MGM, Nomad, and New York, New York, $45 at MGM Grand, Mandalay Bay and Delano, and $50 at Bellagio, Vidara, Aria, and the Cosmopolitan. Resort fees at MGM properties are in place to cover the cost of local and domestic phone calls, digital newspaper and magazine downloads, in-room wireless internet, fitness center access, boarding pass printing, and access to Paramount Plus with Showtime on demand via in-room televisions. Las Vegas is set to host its first Super Bowl ever on February 11th. The AFC team will stay at the Westin Lake Las Vegas. The NFC team will be located at the Hilton Lake Las Vegas. The AFC team will prepare at the Raiders facility in Henderson and the NFC team will be at UNLV. Reba McIntyre, Post Malone, and Andrew Day will be performing during the Super Bowl pregame at Allegiant Stadium. Tiesto will be the Super Bowl's first ever in-game DJ to play during breaks in the game. There are over 7,000 volunteers who will be working that weekend from Thursday to Sunday. Kickoff will be 3.30 p.m. local time, a.k.a. Pacific time. The Clark County Board of Commissioners unanimously passed an ordinance about people stopping on pedestrian bridges on the Las Vegas Strip. The ordinance was proposed right after the inaugural Las Vegas Grand Prix race took place in late November. We covered this in depth in a recent video analyzing the reasons behind the passing of this new ordinance. Some people think it will help with keeping the pedestrian bridges clear of unlicensed vendors, scammers, and homeless people sleeping in the walkway. To make a long story short, Sheriff McMahill has stated that his department is undermanned by 300 officers, which means that there is not enough manpower available to enforce this ordinance consistently throughout the year. This is something that will likely be heavily enforced during big events that shut down the strip like the Grand Prix, but enforcement outside of that is yet to be seen. Blake Shelton's Old Red opened on January 15th right in front of the Horseshoe Hotel and Casino at the center of the Strip. This was a project we previously reported on months ago that has now come to life. The country bar is four stories tall and provides nightly music with dining and dance floor area. The venue features a stage, a massive LED screen, two balconies, and a rooftop for VIP events with semi-private seating and incredible views of the Las Vegas Strip. Old Red is open 11 a.m. to late night and is walk-in only. The Fontainebleau Hotel and Casino pissed off millions of people this month when a customer posted on social media that he waited over an hour at the sportsbook to be served a $24 plate of nachos that only had six chips. The picture of the plate went viral on Twitter with over 1 million views and ignited a lot of angry comments about the value of what you often get in Las Vegas for the amount of money that you pay. This led to the first ever Las Vegas Nacho Wars, where other casinos and restaurants in Southern Nevada began posting pictures on their social media accounts of the nachos that they serve to customers to showcase that they serve more than six chips. Yours truly made a trip to the Fontainebleau Sportsbook shortly after to get a first-hand look inside the Nacho Gate scandal and found that Fontainebleau had quickly changed the amount of chips that come with the nachos. The out-the-door price was $22.76. The Fontainebleau Hotel and Casino responded well by ultimately making light of the situation in a social media post of their own about the growing pains of being a new casino in Las Vegas. The United States Department of Justice announced on Thursday, January 25th, that former president of MGM Grand Scott Sabella pleaded guilty to violating the Bank Secrecy Act for knowingly allowing a man to operate an illegal bookmaking service on MGM Grand and its affiliated 
related properties without notifying the casino's compliance department. The DOJ article states that MGM Grand and the Cosmopolitan Las Vegas casinos have entered into settlements that require them to pay a combined $7.45 million, undergo external review, and enhance their anti-money laundering compliance program. Scott Sabella will be represented in court by Las Vegas attorney John Spilatro, the nephew of infamous Las Vegas mobster Tony the Ant Spilatro. The Rio Hotel and Casino is making very noticeable progress in the early months of its renovation process. The Ipanema Tower renovation will be fully complete in February. Drink prices have also been reduced under the new ownership. Under Caesar Entertainment, a Jack and Ginger used to be $18.41, but now under Dreamscape, as the new owner, it is $13. Domestic beers at Rio used to be around $11, but now start at $8. Imports used to be about $12, but now start at $9.75. The casino website also shows that they are doing offer matching for guests whose gambling has earned them offers from other casinos. The biggest change you will see so far inside the Rio is the completion of the new canteen food hall. The lineup includes six restaurants, Tony Luke's, Nama Nama, Attaboy Burger, Shogun Ramen, Southland Burrito Company, and Tender Crush. We strolled through a couple days after opening. The place is spacious with a variety of seating options, including booths, high tops, and counter space. There are truly dozens of drink options for you to choose from. The food prices do seem to be more affordable than what many of the tourists are used to seeing on the strip. What caught our attention most was that Attaboy Burger serves a regular burger for just $8 and a double for $11. Compare that to the strip where you're likely paying closer to $20 for a regular burger. The food hall is open Sunday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Future plans for Rio include a multi-million dollar investment in renovating the pool along with adding more food and entertainment options. If you are a fully grown adult who thoroughly enjoys either drinking, acting like a child, or both, then you're probably going to want to head to the strip's newest attraction that just opened. Play Playground, a new immersive gamified bar at the Luxor is a place where you can play like a kid again. The two-story, 15,000 square feet attraction features 20 games that are designed to be hands-on, non-digital, group fun, like when you were a kid. There is no virtual reality, no augmented reality, and no arcade games in this playground. It features a giant slide, an inflatable maze, a bounce house, physical games, memory games, puzzle games, and team games for up to eight people for 90 minutes of fun. Play Playground is open Saturday to Thursday from noon to midnight and Friday and Saturday from noon until 2 a.m. All ages are welcome for the first five hours, but once 5 p.m. hits, the venue is strictly for the 21 and over. Now is a good time to remind everyone who wants a deal in Las Vegas to join over 10,000 other people on our email list to receive a free monthly list of different hotel, casino, food, drink, and birthday deals right to your inbox. The next list will be going out one to two days after this video is published. The sign up link is in the description below. Enjoy the deals. Area 15's 20 acre expansion project is well underway. The newer Las Vegas attraction is working to push its popularity to another level as it adds a universal horror experience and a salvaged 747 plane that would be open year round. The expansion project is expected to feature over 450,000 square feet of entertainment attractions, retail, food and drink options in addition to the already existing options on site. Despite calls for changes in 2024, F1 has announced that it will keep the 10 p.m. local start time for the race in November. This comes after an open letter written in December by Ross Mollison of Spiegel World stating that his shows Absinthe, Atomic Saloon, and Opium lost a total of $500,000 during the week of F1 when they canceled their shows due to the race. Mollison also stated that the late start time did not give people the opportunity to take in the nightlife on the Las Vegas Strip, which includes restaurants, shows, and other attractions. Mollison suggested a start time of 3 p.m. so that the race could still finish at night and people would have more time to gamble and do other activities afterwards. The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority reported the race as a success with an expected $35 million in estimated tax revenue. Local leaders were given a private survey to share what they think could be done better next time, while the county put together a report to look at potential changes. The Las Vegas Grand Prix will mark the third to last event on the F1 calendar. It will run on Saturday, November 23rd, with practice sessions and qualifying set for the two days prior. 
Planet Hollywood recently published on its social media that it is opening a new casino bar called Glass Bar this winter. The bar will be right in the center of the casino floor where the old Heart Bar used to be next to the back theater. The press release from Planet Hollywood describes Glass Bar as spanning nearly 4,000 square feet. The inviting cocktail lounge features bar top games for guests to enjoy while sipping on a cocktail or watching sports on one of the six television screens that wrap around the bar. The new venue offers personalized bottle service, craft cocktails, and premium spirits and beer. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Sheriff Kevin McMahill wants both red light and speed cameras at intersections across the Las Vegas Valley. McMahill spoke about the cameras as he discussed issues around traffic safety in the Metropolitan Police Department's jurisdiction in 2023, as well as ways to help foster a safer driving environment. However, Nevada law prohibits such cameras unless a law enforcement officer is actually present to witness the event. Over half of the states in the U.S. do not use these cameras for a variety of reasons used against them, some being constitutionality, citizen privacy, camera accuracy, misidentifying drivers or vehicles, and increasing the amount of rear-end accidents. If anyone has had their casino chips stolen from right in front of them while playing table games in 2018 in Las Vegas, it might have been by a man named Neil Ahmed Hearn, who could end up being the 37th person added to Nevada's infamous Black Book. Hearn was arrested on felony charges and an investigation later revealed that he had snatched chips and ran off at the Silverton and 13 other Clark County casinos. Since the control board has formally nominated Hearn to the list to be banned from all Nevada casinos, he'll be notified of his options to fight exclusion in a formal hearing before the Nevada Gaming Commission, which has the final say on his addition to the list. An iconic Vegas area casino that millions of people have seen is being demolished. Terrible's Hotel and Casino along I-15 in Gene, Nevada, near the California border, will officially become a memory. The property initially opened as the Gold Strike in the 1980s and at one point was a popular spot for people to stop during Vegas road trips. Terrible's closed during the pandemic and never reopened. The new plan for the land is to develop a 3 million square feet industrial park spread out over eight buildings. Christina Aguilera abruptly canceled the rest of her Las Vegas residency due to issues over her health. It was rumored months ago that she may be getting a residency at the Venetian before the official announcement came in October 2023. Aguilera had already performed for two of her residency dates on her opening weekend at the end of December. The residency was initially set for a total of 10 dates. Aguilera apologized on social media that she would be having to reschedule two shows while she rests. She went on to say that she cannot wait to get back on stage in a couple of weeks, but no new official dates for the eight remaining shows have been set. It comes as a surprise to no one that Super Bowl weekend will be a rather expensive time to be in Las Vegas. However, if you're looking for something to do that is more affordable, then check out Shaq's Super Bowl Fun House. The event will take place at XS Nightclub at the Wynn on February 9th with the idea that it will be a more affordable event to attend. The party will feature artists like Lil Wayne, Diplo, DJ Irie, Miles O'Neill, and don't forget about Shaq himself. There will be plenty of music, alcohol, carnival rides, games, and live performers for this massive weekend in Vegas. General admission tickets are sold in limited supply in six different tiers. The $100 and $130 tickets are currently sold out, so the cheapest tickets as of the making of this video are $150 each. Oakland A's owner John Fisher was recently in town for an event with the Las Vegas Metro Chamber of Commerce to discuss stadium plans. Fisher stated that they are currently working on renderings that will show not only what the new ballpark will look like, but also the new on-site hotel that will be built after the demolition of the Tropicana. Construction of the 33,000 seat $1.5 billion stadium is expected to begin in 2025. The A's are receiving $380 million in public funding. Fisher said the difference will largely be funded with equity from his own family. According to Forbes, John's estimated net worth is $2.9 billion and is the son of Donald and Doris Fisher, who founded the Gap Retail Stores that grew into owning other brands like Old Navy and Banana Republic, among others. Forbes estimated the Fisher's family 2020 net worth to be $8.9 billion. The bullet train between Las Vegas and Rancho Cucamonga is set to hire 11,000 workers. The Department of Labor met on Tuesday, January 9th, to meet with trade unions from both California and Nevada to discuss the task. 
The current plan is for 3,000 Southern Nevada workers to be hired to build the rail from Las Vegas Boulevard in Warm Springs near the South Premium Outlets all the way to the California border. In December, the Biden administration approved $3 billion in funding for Brightline. Commissioner Michael Naft explains how the project is more a reality than ever, noting that entitlement issues, land use issues, and rights of way issues have been resolved, and that the project is now truly shovel ready. The goal is for completion by summer 2028 in time for the Olympics in Los Angeles. The city of Las Vegas published a tweet that a new pedestrian bridge is still in the works on the Las Vegas Strip at the intersection of Sahara and Las Vegas Boulevard. The intersection is one of the busiest in the entire city and sees 70 to 80,000 cars a day on a Friday or Saturday. One thing that will be different about this bridge is the shape of it, as will be much more in the shape of an oval. The most recent blog post from the city's website is from November of 2021, when the bridge construction was expected to begin in 2023 and finish in 2024. This bridge is one of several from a larger project to add more pedestrian bridges to the strip in recent years. No updated timeline on the construction of this pedestrian bridge has been given as of yet. The Neon Museum just north of Fremont Street has made some changes to its operation that will allow more people to be able to visit the popular attraction displaying the unique history of Las Vegas. The museum has changed from being tour guided to now being a self-guided tour. In 2023, the museum turned away over 40,000 visitors because their tours were sold out. Guided tours will still be available, but the change will allow for more flexibility for guests to visit the museum. There was a recent article in the Las Vegas Review Journal on five of the seven Clark County commissioners accepting F1 tickets worth nearly $11,000 each. All seven commissioners were offered the four-day tickets to the VIP Skybox area that includes a dedicated service team, handcrafted cocktails, food, music, and incredible views of the race. Commissioners William McCurdy, Tick Siegerblom, Jim Gibson, Justin Jones, and Ross Miller accepted the tickets. Commissioners Marilyn Kirkpatrick and Michael Naft declined the offer. The tickets were valued at $10,000 with an additional $900 tacked on to account for Nevada's 9% live entertainment tax. The commissioners say that the tickets were for educational reasons to get a better understanding of how the event operates in order to make future improvements. We will now rapid fire some more updates before diving into the rumors section. Orla Restaurant at Mandalay Bay has opened. Raiders quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo gifted a military family a trip to the Super Bowl. The Paris Hotel finished renovations of its Versailles Tower rooms. Stack Restaurant and Bar inside of the Mirage has closed. No word yet on what will take its place or if this has anything to do with the property rebranding to Hard Rock. The Raiders made Antonio Pierce their team's new official head coach this month after going 5-4 and four as the interim head coach after the firing of Josh McDaniels. Adam Harrison, son of Pawn Stars Rick Harrison, has sadly passed away at 39 years old. The Bellagio Conservatory switched for Lunar New Year and looks amazing as always. There's a new Costco store opening on Buffalo in 215. Entertainment icon Tony Orlando has announced that he will be retiring and putting an end to his 51-year career in performing. No word on any progress from President Joe Biden about eliminating resort fees. A new Chuck E. Cheese is opening in the Northwest Las Vegas at the end of this month, which will be the first ever to feature its new trampoline zone. A new food court will be coming to Miracle Mile Shops at Planet Hollywood. The food court will feature a variety of foods and will be called Miracle Eats and is set to open in the fourth quarter of 2024. MGM bought a small 1.6 acre piece of land on the strip right in between the Bellagio and Cosmo. The Las Vegas hometown band The Killers will be getting a residency at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace for eight dates from the middle of August to Labor Day weekend. Emerald Island and Rainbow Club casinos on Water Street in downtown Henderson were officially sold in a sale that closed shortly after the new year. The Culinary Union is still in negotiations with 19 casinos in Las Vegas. Rock Legends Billy Joel and Sting are co-headlining Allegiant Stadium on November 9th. Tickets go on sale in early February. On May 24th, Hawaiian Airlines will increase its four times weekly round trips between Honolulu and Las Vegas to daily service until July 28th. The Atari-themed hotel that first made news back in 2020 has now surfaced again in the news as potentially being a viable option for a new property in Las Vegas. The Oakland A's might have to find a temporary home in Utah before they can begin playing in Las Vegas. The Sahara Casino's new high-limit slot room is now open, and someone punched a player's rewards kiosk at Caesars Palace. We'll kick off the rumor section of the video with a rumor that surfaced at the end of December that has proven to be true. RTC bus drivers in Las Vegas could go on a strike if current negotiations fail. 
In addition to wanting higher pay, drivers are requesting to have a transit police department to keep them and riders safer. This request continues to come after several high-profile cases that made local news, including a murder and several shootings. About 155,000 people use RTC buses daily in Clark County, and these buses provided nearly 41 million rides in the fiscal year of 2022. Fontainebleau may partner with the Agua Caliente Casinos in Southern California, owned by the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians, to bring in more players. Word is that a top development exec from Agua Caliente was in Vegas recently to work out the deal. There are three Agua Caliente Casinos near each other in Southern California, within about a four or so hour drive of Las Vegas. These casinos are the Rancho Mirage, Palm Springs, and Cathedral City. One rumor that broke out back in April of 2023 was the possibility of Tiesto leaving his resident DJ position at Zook Nightclub at Resorts World and could possibly sign a deal with Fontainebleau. On January 4th of 2024, Tiesto announced on his social media that he did in fact sign a deal to be the resident DJ at Fontainebleau's Live Nightclub. MGM Resorts bought the Cosmopolitan Hotel and Casino in September of 2021 and closed the deal in May of 2022 but still has yet to integrate Cosmo's Identity Rewards program with MGM's Rewards program. This was supposed to take place in February, but that date has been canceled. The issue with merging these two rewards program is rumored to be due to the cyber attack that MGM faced in the fall of 2023. Although everything may seem to be operating normally for the properties on the surface, this delay could be due to any lingering problems from the attack. Unfortunately, there is no new date that guests can expect this transition to officially take place. On MGM's FAQ section for this question, the website states, We are excited to share that MGM Rewards will officially become the loyalty program of the Cosmopolitan in 2024. Until then, identity membership and rewards and MGM Rewards will remain separate programs. Keep in mind that if you're looking to get a wide range of Vegas deals every month for free, be sure to sign up for our email list to get more value delivered to you. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Jacob, and this is my life in Vegas.